desire, this kind of. I believe mean, isn't this a very natural flow of events? Usually, how things happen, isn't it? So you have this tiny little dream inside you, you know, and uh, from there it grows very strong, turns into a passion, turns into a desire, and then you know maybe your mind tries to help you find out, discover part how you can achieve that. Guys, for me. Life did not really follow this conventional path at all. At this point of time, let me introduce myself to you once again after that introduction. Hi, I am Chef Pankaj Pradoria. I am the first winner of uh, Master Chef in India and uh, also a proud recipient of the First Ladies Award uh, given by the President of India, uh, an award uh, initiated by the Ministry of uh, Child and Women Welfare. I also authored five books so far, posted 10 television shows, and uh, uh, I have my own culinary academy and from that. Yeah. So, as I said, life did it actually, you know, follow the conventional path for me. One fine day I just discovered the password to Aladdin mm -hmm. Cakes. This password was Master Chef. And how my life changed after that. Uh, one lady June afternoon, we were sitting watching television when we discovered something called MasterChef coming to India. Right? And then prompted by my kids, I decided to audition for it. We had three rounds of audition in Lucknow, another round of audition in Mumbai, and that is where hurdle number one appeared. Now, to move on in MasterChef, to go on to the next level, I required leave. You know how difficult it is to get a leave sanction? Yes? And that took for three months. Right? Chances were, if I qualified the next round, I would have to stay back for three months. If not, I would be coming back to this period. So with a lot of apprehension, of course, I approached my administration, asked them for leave, and the same administration, who had sanctioned me to two of my colleagues to go into this US for three months, could not sanction me that. So there were some theories, meetings, some very heated refusals, of course. But, and also certain comments like, you don't know what they're saying now. You don't know what they're saying You're attracted by the glamour of the television world. Excuse me, I'm a mother of two kids. Where does glamour come in? Or ultimatums like, either you quit the show or you quit your job. I have been working in that school for 16 years. I taught English to and uh, this came as a very rude shock to me. Uh, but I really thank God and I really thank my principal. Because had she not been that bitter that day, maybe I wouldn't have been so driven about proving myself. And so, I thank God with the help and support of my family. I decided to quit that job. I still get emotional about it when I talk about it. Because it meant so much to me. But then I quit the job and I decided I am going to open the door for myself. Let me give this this final push and see whether this really is the door for me. And as you see, fortune favors the brave and maybe I was brave enough that day. And uh, so, yes, I discovered this was the door for me. Uh, I came to MasterChef, cleared one hurdle after the other and became the winner. But you know what, guys? Success comes easy. You've heard that? Yes, we do. It does come easy. But more difficult is to sustain that success. Reaching up is easy, believe me. But trying to make sure you stay up there, very difficult. It's so easy to tumble down. It's so easy to fall. Because you constantly live with the fear of losing. You know, losing the position that you Believe me, with one CR in my pocket, it would have been so easy for me to sit back, relax, and enjoy my life. But no, I had tasted success. And success is very, very intoxicating. Very intoxicating. So, it makes you work hard, even harder, you know, to stay where you are. I knew for a surety, every year we would have a new master chef, a new winner, new competition, what is it that would make me stand out? 
what is it that would ensure I stay where I am? You know, there have been so many meteoric rises. And then people have disappeared. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to live the dream that I had built. I wanted to live what I had achieved. And so, of course, as ever, there has to be something called careful plan. Right? So, from here on, my journey was not mine alone. It was the journey of an entire team. Right? So, we sat down. We talked about it. We thought, what is it that would make sure that I stay where I am? At least stand out in a crowd. And that is when I decided to set up my culinary academy. My culinary academy is, uh, uh, I don't think any winner worldwide has a culinary academy to their name. So the Mashak Badoria Culinary Academy today caters to students from all across the country. I have students coming in from Bhutan, from Gujarat, from West Bengal, from Kerala, you know, to train and become chefs. Why do they come to me? They come to me because they trust me. Right? 60% of the students in my class today are girls. That's highly, highly encouraging because this is one field that has always been male dominated. But when the parents come to us with a lot of apprehensions, I tell them, look, if I could do it, so can your daughter. And I tell these girls, if I could do it, so can you. Right? So with this belief, I like to encourage them to motivate them to move on with what they have chosen and to believe in the dream that they have and go on with that. Uh, I, I think I have been very lucky that I have the faith in my ability to take that leap that way. But you know what? There is this breed of humans that absolutely baffles me. You know, they amaze me and it has been dangerous. What took me 17 years to do, you can do it in 17 days. I mean, it took me 17 years to change a job to a career. But you can do it any time you want. One of the girls here who has been accompanying me looking after me ever since I arrived, she studied computer science, worked in investment banking, and now is with the NP. Right? You work so hard to get into the colleges of your dream. Then you work even harder to get good grades so that when campus placements happen, you can get into the best companies with the best packages. Right? Yes. But 10 days, 15 days, a month, two months, a year into it, and then you realize, nah, this is not what I want to do. This is not soul satisfying. So I'm going to look for something for you. Soul satisfying? My God, in our days, we used to look for jobs that were only TMI satisfying. No? But I really wonder that. And I am so amazed. And I feel so, and I feel, wow, you people have so many opportunities before you. You are so blessed. And you're even blessed with very, uh, you know, supportive parents, mind you. You must thank your parents as well because they support you in whatever you want to do. My own daughter, for that matter, she uh, graduated from one of the best colleges in the country, uh, got into KPMG. But within two months, she decided this is not what I want to do, and it's quitting and coming back. So when I asked her, baby, what do you want to do? Ma, I think maybe fashion. I think I go to Milan and study fashion management. Or we got an image analysis. Image analysis? Where were all these jobs when we were growing up? No, they weren't there. So it's just a dream. You know that lives within you. At times it gets clouded. By so many things around us. Right? It takes time for you to clear your vision and find out exactly what you want to do. So please go ahead and do that. I would like to say something. Six forty-one. Dream. Please dream. Dreams are absolutely beautiful. But what you dream with your eyes closed. Let your mind help you to realize that with your eyes closed. But before you take that step, think. Think twice. Think thrice. Is it really your dream? Or is it a pigment, you know, implanted in your mind by what you see around, by your peers, by your parents, or something that has fired you for a moment? 